Jay Patterson from Two Dudes Reviews. We are here at uh, Passport 2019. It's the Passport Weekend. ElDoradoWines.org is where you can find out about this amazing event. Happens every single year, I do believe. How many years is this? you have any idea, Hawk? Uh, over, what, 10, 30? So over 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> 10, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, Yeah. <laughs> This is, uh, this is Hawk, and there are uh, 25 different wineries that participate in this. It happens over two weekends at the beginning of April. Uh, we're out here for the second weekend because we wanted to make sure all of the, uh, all the training purposes got out of the way on the first weekend, so we're just dealing with pros today. Uh, every single stop that you go to, um, they're pairing up different food items that will complement the wines that they have offering, and we found this one to be pretty unique. This is a, a truffle, black, garlic, and cumin popcorn. And we're drinking a Charbono. So my question was, is Charbono a blend or is it a varietal? Hawk, give us some uh, logic on the Charbono. So the Charbono is a varietal, and this one is 100% Charbono, aged in 100% new French oak. Um, there's not a lot of left, not a lot of Charbono left in the world. Um, Napa Valley has a lot of it, and um, we're actually going to plant some in our vineyards. We're going to do a block of that. So. Is it because yeah. it's a tough grape to grow, or is it because it's just not sought after? Why? Why? I is think it's not just a not a very yeah sought after grape, and it's just kind of lost, kind of got lost, I guess. Hmm. I think it's got a really interesting balance. It's, it's not too sweet. It's very unique. Very the, good. The, ta the tannins are there, but they're not overly okay. pronounced. Yeah. You can totally get a bit of the oak on it. It's dynamite. And uh, the winery we're starting with is a Mediterranean. Relatively new winery. This winery has been in operation for, what, only a year or two? Almost a year Almost since a year. Uh, last September. Okay, since last September. Uh, our first of many stops. Uh, we'll continue to take you on the tour for the Passport. Uh, it's a Passport Weekend here in El Dorado County. Stop number two on our tour. Of course, you can take these tours any way you want. This is the legendary Skinner. As far as most of the uh, wineries here in El Dorado County, Skinner is one of the uh, the more the more highly reputable. I, when when I think about El Dorado County, I hear a lot about Skinner. So we decided got to make this stop number two before our palate gets too burnt. They've got some wood fire peach over here. We're hanging out here with Tim. Tim's son is actually uh, the winemaker. Is that correct? That's right. Adam. Skinner is known for uh, for Rhone varietals, so all of their their grapes are Rhone varietals. Real quick, take a look at the view here. One of the be most beautiful views in the entire area. Just gorgeous. Okay, we're here at winery number three. Thanks, camera girl. Uh, this is pretty much the winery that introduced me to the uh, to the Sierra foothills south of I-80. So we're talking about um, you know Amador County, El Dorado, uh, and the winery is CGDRE. And uh, Heim, this is Ali Sheva. Heim is uh, is Ali Sheva's husband, and uh, Ali. Ellie, 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 Ellie sorry. Ellie, yeah. um, it's not Ellie, it's Ellie. Spectacular winery. <laughs> These guys are doing something that is very, very unique to what's going on here in the area. You were explaining, Ellie, about uh, about gravity and what the different, how, you know, um, I guess particular the grapes can be when it comes to pumping versus just letting gravity do its exactly. the nature's course. Tell me about that a little bit. Well, uh, as I was saying before, when the grapes come in from the harvest, they come into the winery. And if you're not a gravity treated winery, gravity flow, we call it right. gravity flow winery, then you must get your grapes into the tank. And since the tank is very high, you're you are going to be pumping the grapes, and in the pumping is a very it's a very, uh, I would almost say, violent, Violet, yeah. violent activity. Yeah. Yeah. And invariably, you're going to be breaking or bruising the seeds. And in doing so, the seeds have all the tenants, the harsh tenants. You have soft tenants, which is in the pe in the in the peels, in the yeah. in the skin, and then you have the harsh tenants, which is in the seeds. You never want to break the seeds. And once the tannin so, is out in the juice. It's out. It's There's nothing thing. you can do to control it. You cannot it. get. You cannot retrieve it back. You cannot sub subdue it. Yeah. You just. That's what you have. Yeah. Okay. So, um, be, being that we are on a ridge, originally the contractor 
had said to us that we could have a cave. And Chaim opted, he didn't want to have a cave. And I, he said, I know people who come to visit wineries love caves, they love the cave environment. But we decided, it, it, it gives, he gives it an ambiance, yeah, it, it gives it a, it I, I'm not going to take away from that, that's yeah, absolutely, absolutely so. But he opted for technology, definitely. So um, we decided to have the gravity flow. Yeah. So, and that really made a difference. You taste it in the wine. Mm. There's no question about it. I think that Heim definitely has a, a finger, his a thumb on his wine. So <laughs> yeah, you, absolutely. Will, you, will, you will always know when you're drinking his wines. Don't you yeah. think so? Yeah, it's that, how many gravity fed wine? Are they in California? Uh, probably six yeah, all total yeah. in six. California. Okay. Yeah, all of California. All of California, wow. maybe okay. about six. So, and that, that is, so that's pretty much old school technology. That's yeah. how things were done in the olden days because right. You know, you didn't have you the, didn't the pump. Pump. Exactly. To have the technology. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. And so, these are Rhone varietals, so they come from the old world. These are old world wines, right? right. So the old world technique does a lot to uh, to preserve and, and make sure that you, I mean, it's tough to find a bottle of CGPRE that I don't like. Yes. We, we, yes. Had, we haven't had a bottle that we didn't like. Now we have our favorites. Yes. Yeah. The father and the filio. The filio, oh, yeah. Father and son. Yeah. Yeah. That's Syrah Petit Syrah. Um, yeah. See, I love it's a nice blend. that. Yeah. Any of the Syrahs, Petit Syrahs, and the Tempranillo, yes. I mean, I love this one really nice. You can uh, see our video that we've got for a vertical of Cabernets here in the El Dorado County area. Not a lot of folks do Cabernets. Heim and CGDRE do Cabernets. Very, very well. Uh, you can take a look at our uh, at our vertical where we do three different years of the exact same varietal up on the uh, up on the website. So I'll put the link right here. And we're on to the next uh, winery. Cheers. Cheers. Obviously, there's lots of wine to be drank <laughs> yeah, there here. Is. Uh, we're not live, thank God. Oh, thank goodness. So we can always redo or <laughs> do an edit or something that like that. Funny. I'm hanging out here with uh, Russ and Deb. Now, Russ, kilt and uh, kilt. cork. Yes. Look at that, right? I mean, that is a <laughs> rocket. I mean, how much more metal does it get I'm telling you. than it's that particular kilt yes. right there? Hot thank damn. You. Tell us about, uh, Russ, tell me about your experience here in Placerville and Fair Play and the area. How long have you been out here? And, uh, and, and tell me about how you started doing this whole kilt and cork thing. Sure. Um, Dave, I've been out here for 23 years. And when I moved out here, it wasn't quite as big as it is now. Yeah. So it was really the early, not so much the early days, but kind of still on the cusp of a lot of wineries coming in, um, a lot of new um, people moving in, big, big, uh, um, housing areas down in, in, in El Dorado Hills, but it was, you could just tell back then that this is going to be a special place, and as it's grown over the years, and we've got so many new wineries and distilleries and breweries and um, activities, you know, rafting companies and, and bed and breakfast, which are, you know, and, and these little uh, Airbnbs, yeah. it's, it's really just kind of morphed into uh, a destination, yeah. and it, it's just... It's God's country. It's just beautiful. So I've been doing this as far as promoting for about two years now. Um, Kilt and Cork's been about a year. Okay. Um, but I've been uh, doing digital media and, and promotion for the wineries for, gosh, I don't know, probably about 14 years. Now, if you're looking to fly in to, uh, to, to come visit the area and you're from out of the state, you can easily fly into Sacramento Airport. Yeah, absolutely. It's maybe an hour drive up into the hills here? Yeah, probably and, a little bit over, just to be fair, but it's, yeah. it's not that difficult to get here. Highway now, 50 and you're here. A lot of people think about California and wines and they think about the Napa cabs. Napa known for, you know, be, being a, a, a great region for Cabernet grapes. Right. What is this region known for? If you're going to come out here to uh, the Sierra Foothills, what does this region specialize in? That's a great question. So the beauty of the El Dorado, ABA, and really the Sierra Foothills in general is that they can grow a lot of different varietals. And Cabernet is not an exception. There's a lot of Cabernet. Yeah. There's probably some behind us here that grows exceptionally well. And it's just a different animal than the Napa Cab. But if you're going to look for a, a varietal or a type of wine that is really that this area is known for, I'd have to say it's it's the Italian varietals, Barbera, Sangiovese, mm -hmm. and especially the Rhone varietals. Old world stuff. The old world stuff, the Grenache, the Romedra. 
the, the blends, like the GSM blends, um, you're going to get some beautiful Italian blends. Now, so, for those who don't know, explain what GSM is. Good question. So GSM are the three primary grapes in the Rhone. Um, so they blend them together. It's Grenache, Syrah, and Morvedra. Yeah. Um, Morvedra is a funny way to spell it. Actually, we're talking to the people down at Miraflores yesterday, and in Spain it's called Mataro. So it's really a Mediterranean feel in, in this area uh, with, the, with the bridles that they grow. Right. Definitely. Now, about town Deb. Deb, uh, you, hey. you, you and I know each other from the we foodie do. scene. Yeah, in, uh, the in, food. in Reno. In Reno, yeah. right. What drew you out to this? Because uh, you're on weekend number three. How does that work exactly? <laughs> you must have friends in high places. Well, I have friends in all places because <laughs> this is a friendly town, as you were yeah. saying. No, you know what? I've probably been coming out here 10 years. Wow. Um, okay. But the last six years, I've been focusing on um, just learning the area and my friends from Reno kept saying, you know, we need to go wine taste. I'm like, where are we going? To Napa? Oh, no. And I'm like, where are we going? El Dorado Wine Country. Yeah. I didn't even know that it existed. Yeah. A lot of people from Reno know Amador. Right. But they, they didn't know the charm of here and all yeah. the stuff you can do in the winery. So the last four years, because I had a radio show called Chick Chat in Reno. Right. And a lot of the winemakers, especially Mike Owen with Crystal Basin, would call in and give the grape report on my show. Like that? So that's kind of how it started. Okay. And then I'm like, you know what? We need to bring Reno over the hill. Right. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to be the About Town Deb to go from Reno, Truckee, Tahoe, and come over here and just stay here and get yeah. to know the folks and the shopping and the... I mean, you t he talked about... Uh, the wine, but there's also the music here, yeah. music guy. Yeah. The local music here is kind of like what it was in Reno about six years ago. Okay. When I first was doing Chick Chat, I'd have like the local, like Eric Anderson and yeah. Kate Cotter. They would come on. This is what I'm seeing now right here the yeah. last two years. So You can hear a little bit of that in the background right now. Yeah, there's playing. some music. And live, there's, if you, come, when you go wine tasting on the weekends and even on during the week, mostly weekends, the local wineries are supporting the local musicians so you can sit in a winery and you can just hear great live music right. and they're supporting each other and the restaurants are pretty incredible but my goal is to bring us together right like one heart to another heart enjoy great wine meet you can where can you meet the winemakers Seriously, well yeah you that, that's difference? what i was gonna say you know i i've always had a nice respect for wines but you know you uh, and not to to slight napa at all but Napa is such a hotbed that it's it can be difficult to have the one-on-one -on -one time. If you're looking for an education and you're trying to say, okay, what exactly is going on here, aside from going, oh, it's a great wine. Well, if you want to get an education on where it was grown, how it was grown, how it was harvested, the types of yeast they're using, the aging process, you can do that because you're hanging out with the wine makers here, right? And oftentimes you're barbecuing and maybe getting a little buzz on after the winery closes at 5 o'clock, well, I right? have to say that does happen. It and does. You know what? I think the other part that I really like about it is that with being about Town Deb and bringing people over, I will have a group of Reno people meet me here. Yeah. And then we have a driver and we go from wine, we make appointments at the different wineries. So they actually know when they're going to walk in a tasting room, they're actually meeting the winemaker and the owners, whether it's a lot, and there's a lot of women. Yeah. A lot of women wine owners and makers here. So that's important to me as About Town Deb as well. But I just think it's the charm and it's the personality that it's not. So for me, I surround myself with people like Russ. Right. And the winemakers because I don't need to know all the facts and figures. I just need to be bring people to meet. It's about bringing, <laughs> it's about becoming family with people. So I just always feel like you come here, you meet the winemakers. The locals are very welcoming. Did yeah. you notice that? Well, I mean, are, everybody aside okay? from our neighbor at the Airbnb, oh. he gave us a hard time for hanging out on the beach. And we, <laughs> we, I guess we were on his part of the property. Oh, but that's yeah. a completely another story. That's you a can, different story. You can check out our Airbnb review. The Airbnb oh. was nice, by the way, but there is a video review on that. I'll put the link in here. Awesome. But, anyway, <laughs> I, just think that's, I think it's about connecting people yeah. is what I do. Yeah. So, yeah. Russ. About the uh, the passport event itself. Yes. It says passport weekend. There should be an S in there somewhere because it's actually weekends. Two, two, two weekends. How long has the passport been going on? And there is a uh, there is a charitable aspect to this. Tell me about that. That's right. So this is the 25th year, if I'm not mistaken, for passport weekends. It is two weekends. Um, and it is it, the charity is Ag in the class uh, Ag in the classroom. Too much wine. Yeah. Ag in the classroom. <laughs> and also the El Dorado Winery Association Scholarship Fund. Okay. And those both uh, benefit kids who are looking future to, generations exactly. of winemakers. Yes. That's exactly right. So that's that's you know, 
Yeah. So that's what they want. The farmers, uh, El Dorado County, Amador County, they're very ag-centric counties. Um, you know, everywhere you look, there's there's some sort of agriculture, especially in Apple Hill. Yeah. There's the right. apples, the orchards, and the grapes and timber. So agriculture is very big up here. It's a very much a part of the, the fabric of this this area. So that's who they've chosen to support. Dynamite. Well, I, again, uh, hats off to Madrona. That's where we're starting our day number Madrona, two off here. Yeah. <laughs> Russ, Deb, great to see you both. You too. Good to see you too, Jave. I'm Jave. Studios Reviews.